Everyone's fired up at 205 these days. Elie Latifi coming off a uh, massive win over Ovin St. Pru. Remember that in February. Part of that beat Tyson Pedro. Everyone thought that he was going to lose that fight. So he's won his last two in a row, and he is fired up now. Mm. All right. So we'll see how that turns out. We'll see how the UFC handles the Daniel Cormier situation. Does he, in fact, fight a 205? Personally, I think he should never fight a 205 ever again. I think he should stay at heavyweight. I think he's at his best when he's fighting at heavyweight. I think he's at his, his healthiest when he's fighting at heavyweight. Um, and, 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 and personally, I, I, I feel like... He has done everything that he needed, although there are some fresh guys coming up. But literally, TV versus Daniel Cormier, if Cormier wasn't so close to the end, <clears throat> I think would be phenomenal. The problem is he's close to the end. And I have a hard time begrudging Daniel Cormier for saying yes to the Brock Lesnar fight. I feel like the onus in this situation needs to be on the UFC for bringing this fight to the table. If the UFC or anyone, your employer, anyone is going to dangle a carrot like that, that you know for a fact it is going to bring you a lot of money, opportunities, exposure, but more important than anything, a lot of money, you are going to take said opportunity. Now, I'm sure you can be, yeah, okay, perfect world, you could be righteous and say, you know, I want to do things the right way, but this is the guy who's pushing 40. This is a guy who's been competing for a very, very long time. This is a guy who uh, has been through many ups and downs. A year ago, he was getting knocked out by John Jones. At this stage, is he going to say no to a Brock Lesnar fight when he has said repeatedly that he wants to retire next March when he turns 40? I don't see that happening. But if the UFC never brought it to his attention, I have no doubt that he would not be calling for it but they did. And so he did. By the way, I thought he did a great job on the broadcast. I mentioned this on Twitter. Very few people in, in, in the history of sports can go from doing what he does, winning the heavyweight title, to then being an analyst like him. Because it, it requires a level of checking your ego, you know, putting other people over. It, it, it requires a level of, you know, telling the world, I'm not the best right now. I'm going to talk about these guys and doing it with a level of enthusiasm and and just this happy-go-lucky nature. I mean, look at the way he was talking about Bret Hart. It was incredible. Um, And he continues to be one of the best, if not the best in the game. What's going on? All right. In a minute, we're going to be joined by Max Holloway, just trying to connect with him. And what a uh, what a big interview this is. Uh, very excited to talk to him. <clears throat> in a matter of seconds, we're going to talk to Max Blessed Holloway, who is standing by in Hawaii. And of course, we haven't heard from him since UFC 226. He was supposed to fight Brian Ortega. He was supposed to fight in the co-main event of that card in Las Vegas. And on the Wednesday before the fight, we found out that he was pulled from the card due to concussion-like symptoms. We've seen him pop up on social media. I thought he's handled it incredibly well, better than anyone could ask or imagine. But we have yet to actually hear from him. A couple of interviews that popped up prior to the announcement that he was out were troubling to watch 
and there was some concern about his health. We're going to clear up all of that and more right now with the reigning defending UFC featherweight champion, Max Holloway. Max, are you there? I'm here, Ariel. What's up? It's good to hear from you, Max. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Oh, no, it's good to be back on, man. Thank you for having me. Okay, so uh, let's talk most important right off the bat. How are you feeling? There's a lot of concern about your health. Could you tell us how you're feeling right now? Yeah, you know, um, straight into the health question. You know, I was hoping we could uh, we could uh, talk about some other stuff. You know, there's some amazing stuff going with Toronto Raptors right now. I, okay. I figured we could talk for like 10 minutes. You want to talk about, about that? Toronto Raptors and then That's cool. I can go on my way and, uh, with this interview. You want to talk about Kawhi Leonard, DeMar DeRozan getting traded, anything you want? Ah, uh, that nah, man. It's joke. Uh, I'm just joking, man. You know, yeah. So you know, the updates uh, is I've seen multiple doctors and experts, but you know, they they haven't uh, been able to give us any answers about what happened. You know, one, but there's one thing they know right now, and that's I'm, that uh, I'm okay. You know, I'm okay. I'm gonna fight again, but that's all we know. You know, as of right now, I'm good. Okay, so um, now now that you've given us that update, I'd love to start at the beginning of all of this, prior to UFC 226. Mm. When did you start to mm. feel something wasn't right? Uh, you know, it was funny, you know. So we flew out. I flew out of uh, Hawaii on Monday. We got to uh, New York on Tuesday. This is all the week before, before uh, fight week. I had to do media on Wednesday all day. In New York, Thursday we uh, we left early in the morning, New York, and then I land I I land in um, in Vegas at in like Thursday in the afternoon. We had to do some medicals, and then we worked out. You know, it felt uh it felt a little bit weird on Thursday, and then Friday is when things started. I don't know, just going haywire, and then Saturday and Sunday was uh it was insane. But I I don't know what it was, and then one day I got I got conned by the UFC and my team to go to the ER. I was told that uh, they had a van waiting for me down downstairs that was going to do more media, and we ended up in the ER. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and the doctor, and the doctors, you know, and uh, you know, they, they, we did tests, we run a bunch of tests, and um, it's crazy, you know. A lot a lot of people have been uh, talking about. Um, I see a lot of stuff they talk about in the media, you know, weight cut or stroke or whatever. And, uh, you know, you got, you saw me, Ariel. I, I grew up in front of you guys' eyes. I grew up in front of everyone's eyes here in the UFC. You know, this, this wasn't a weight cut. You got, I made weight 20-plus times, you know, and uh, I had uh, you guys been there to the hard weight cuts, to the easy ones, to the hard training camps. You guys been there to everything. You know, this this wasn't it. This wasn't a weight cut thing, you know. It, it was it was weird. I don't know how to explain it. Just uh it's a weird week, you know, Monday, uh, yeah, like I said, got conned to go into the ER. Uh, Tuesday, we tried to work out, feeling funny. Uh, Wednesday, I think so, it was Wednesday, we worked out with uh, DC, I think so, DC, then DC told me to come by, and we went to work out uh, after him. We used the tough gym after him, and, you know, I, I, was, I was messed up there. There's a bunch of interviews that the UFC didn't even drop because, uh, I was horrible in them, so yeah, I, I, I it's very unexplainable. It's a real week. It's a wild week, and uh, I'm glad I can get past it now. You mentioned that you were conned to going to the the ER. Did you not want to go? Did they try to convince you to go, and, and you didn't want to, so they had to tell you that you were going to do interviews? Yeah, man. You, you guys know me. You know me, Ariel. I'm a fighter. I want to fight. I was trying to push the fight to the very last moment. You know that, that, that things. Uh, it, it got taken away from me. You know, I was begging them to fight. I was this and that. I was telling them I'm fine. I was saying anything and everything to get to get in there and do the walk. You know, I wanted to fight. You know, we we, we put in a camp and um, I just wanted to fight. You know, I had a lot of fans. I know a lot of people came to watch and it was hard, man. It, it, it's been hard. You know, it's been a uh, it's been a wild 2018 for me. But uh, we're not done yet. So you know, they uh. They got. They put me on a medical suspension for like 30 days now, and um, you know we're taking it slow. They just, uh, like I said, they they still didn't figure out what was wrong, you know. But everything's coming back good, and um, 
they're just being cautious with me right now. So I think in this 30-day series, you know, and then uh, we should get back to business uh, hopefully before the end of the year. It, it, it was described as, as concussion-like symptoms. Did you suffer a concussion in this camp or at any point leading up to this fight? Yeah, you know, yeah, they said concussion-like symptoms because uh, me and my team said, even the doctors, because that's what they saw all the symptoms before, you know, and when people saw symptoms I was having, that it was like concussion-like symptoms. We went to the doctors and, uh, you know, the, we did all the tests. A lot of the specialists that I saw was concussion was concussion specialists. And, you know, things are, are coming back good, you know. I At the end of the day, I I wish, I wish I, there's rumors going around I, I, I got knocked out in training. You know, I wish it was that. I wish it was that so we could just knock it on, so, so we can just write it down and be like, look, this is what happened, and we can move on from it. But that didn't happen, you know. We had hard training in this, but... I didn't su- suffer a, uh, a concussion at all, you know. So at the end of the day, I wish the answer was that simple. If we, if we knew where to point, you know, I'd be like, oh, this is why I feel like this, you know. But that's why it's so confusing, you know. It'd be easier to move forward if, if I knew, if we knew what happened, you know. And not just for me, but for my mom, my family, and, and, you know, my whole team, you know. We're all struggling with it right now. In, in the statement that your manager, Brian Butler, pull, uh, put out, he said that after the workouts on Wednesday – you, quote, crashed and were very hard to wake up. And then when you did wake up, you had flashing vision and slurred speech. Do you remember any of that? And and if you do, how scared were you? Man, I I, uh, I, I remember some stuff. A, a lot of things, you know, um, that we had to, uh, when I was fighting with him, and when I, when I finally was able to, like, uh, actually know that a couple of days later after everything cooled down, they started showing me videos, they started showing me the interviews, and I was in disbelief, you know. So it it was crazy, you know. It was crazy. You know, I remember I, I remember sleeping for sure. You know, I, I could have slept anywhere, you know, driving from uh, from the open workout to uh, back to our hotel or even from the hotel to the, to the uh, ER, you know. It's only, like, 20 minute drives and I'm like falling asleep you know it's crazy but yeah it was a, it, it was unexplainable man I don't know what what it was you know they're still working hard I know uh, the bunch of specialists and doctors still trying to figure out but they're saying I'm okay so you know it, it, it's good you know in, in the moment I'm a fighter man I'm a fighter I wanted to fight I kept uh kept arguing with, all, with my whole team, you know. Yeah, uh, it was a crazy week for us. You know, I was arguing with them at the very end, you know, to, to let me get in there. But uh, they know what's best for me. You know, I wasn't in my right state of mind. And uh, I'm glad that, that I got, got such a great team, such a great guy, even a great company in the UFC, you know, making sure that uh, I'm all good, sending me to all, see all these doctors and stuff. So uh, you're okay with the decision to remove you from the, the card? you feel like it was the right choice? Uh, you know, if you ask Fighter Max, huh. uh, I would say no. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, if, uh, if if you ask Fighter Max, I, I would say definitely no. But if you look at, at, at through, through through my eyes uh, as my as a coach, as a friend, as a mom, as a parent, as a as a, a father, you know, say I go, I make the walk. This is this is one of the toughest things that uh, that uh, they worked out to me. You know, say I go, I make the walk. Everything is good, you know. I take I take a little bit of damage in there in the fight. Uh, we celebrate, we win. I go to sleep that night. I don't wake up the next day. You know that shit. Uh, that that hit me tough when they told me that. And uh, it's crazy, you know. It's crazy because it's crazy to think you can be here one day and then be be gone the next. You know, so it hit me hard, you know, when they said that. But you know, Fire Max, I wanted to go to the end, you know. But these guys, that's why I got a team. That's why I got a team behind me. Uh, they're always going to try and look out for the best for me. So, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think so. Uh, they made the right decision. As you alluded to earlier, this has been a very tough year for you. Emotionally, how are you handling all of this? Are you feeling down? Are Are you thankful that this was caught beforehand? How, how are you dealing with all this? Because we had the 222 situation, 223, and, and, and now this. After such a great 2017, how are you coping with it all? Um, You know... It is what it is. <laughs> uh-huh. It is what it is, man. You know, I, 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 I've been. You know, it's. Uh, 
it's real, you know. If I, it, this 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 is real, you know, and um, it's a tough one, you know. Like how you said, having that year last year, and then you know having this year, this year, but this year not over, you know. I'm very confident that I'll be back in there before the end of the year, and uh, you know, don't don't count the kid out yet. Don't count the kid out yet. The story, the year's not done, you know. The story's not written, you know. We got a lot more breakdown, and uh, we're just getting started, you know. Uh, People keep forgetting. People keep questioning. You know, we stayed in blessed era. You know, the the things happen for a reason, and I'm a true believer. You know, I I, I believe uh, the man above don't make mistakes, and uh, everything's happen for a reason. So all I can do is uh, get ready. You know, get ready for the next one. Focus on the next one. Clean uh, clean up the spilled milk and uh, move on. Max, was there or is there any concern that you may never fight again? I uh, know. You know, I, I I I saw everybody talk about talk about the uh, I saw that big thing going around was that stroke thing. Yeah, you know, I was tripping out when we was in the when we was in the ER or the doctors. The word stroke never ever came up, so I was in disbelief when people was trying to uh, was trying to use that, you know, and say, oh look, that that's what this is. You know, uh, my entire team wasn't even in the ER. The only uh, only a couple people. So when when we heard the rumors came. Uh, came out, I I first thought that that's just you know could be you know I, I, that's what it was. If it was a stroke or heart problem or attack or whatever people was gossiping about, how you know how in the right mind would the doctors discharge me from from uh, from the hospital? So you know it's just I was never scared. I, I never thought I was going to fight again. You know I, I was thinking uh, things happen for a reason. You know I never ever crossed my mind of that I might not fight again. So it was pretty crazy, you know. Some of the rumors that was coming out was pretty nuts, but that's the media, you know. That's just the media, you know. There's nothing I could do about it, you know. We just wait my turn and, uh, you know, wait for the right interview. And uh, we're here now with, on the best damn MMA interview, you know, with the man himself, Eric Hawani. So I'm glad uh, we did this. Thank you, Max. Um, a couple days later, it was it was heartwarming for us to see, and I'm wondering how it felt for you, and I'm sure it was nowhere near the top of your priorities, but to see Conor McGregor send you a message, to see Khabib Nurmagomedov send you a message, to see Michael Bisping send you a message, so many fighters sending you messages that sem seem to be very heartfelt and very genuine, very authentic. What was that like for you? Yeah, you know, yeah, a couple of days later, I was still out of it. So I was surprised when Conor tweeted, tweeted, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't in disbelief, you know. I really appreciated that. Uh, we're competitors in the octagon, but there comes a time when um, it ain't about that anymore, you know. So for him, for him to recognize that, that was cool, you know. For and same for Khabib, you know. These guys, uh, I think, when you see all those champs re uh, reaching out to me, they've been uh, through a lot, you know. They've been through everything. They've seen it all, and and they knew, you know. They knew this wasn't normal, you know. They knew they knew this is a a weird situation. And um, it felt cool, you know. It felt cool getting reached out and uh, getting the respect. So, you know, respect to all of them, you know. Respect to him, too. You know, I, I saw him uh, figure out his uh, his things with the Brooklyn thing. So, uh, you know, excited to see that guy get back in there. Even Jose Aldo in the cage, after his big win, sending you a message, sending you good thoughts. That's, that's incredible, right? Yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, Jose's the man, you know. People still, uh, still don't know, you know. I, I he, he's the man, you know. He, he's he's one of the guys, like I said, I was 16 years old watching this guy. And he's still here doing his thing, you know. So, it, it is incredible, yo. You know, I, I always say the belts are cool, but that's not what champ life is about, you know. To get the respect of uh, your peers, other champs, that's the highest honor in martial arts and and in life. So it's cool to see all these guys reaching out and doing that, you know. And uh, especially Aldo, you know, taking a time like that, you know where he could have talked and showed himself and whatever, and he took that, that little uh, 20, 30 seconds that his uh, translator didn't uh, didn't translate <laughs> right. But uh, to, to do that, man, that's uh, heartwarming. You know, that, that man, uh, that's how you know. You know, martial arts, uh, UFC fighting is one of the realest forms of anything in life. You know, this is, this is real, uh, it's real cool to see. Max, right now speaking to me, do you feel like yourself or do you still feel like something's different? I feel like myself, man. I feel great. I feel good. 
I feel like the goofy little one I kid that uh that you guys all come to love. You know, I feel like the guy that uh when I see DC I'm probably gonna tease him that he's, you know, big as uh S H I T and uh and uh, it's, it's funny, you know, it, it's cool. I feel great, you know, I feel great. I just uh just taking this time, you know, focusing, uh focusing on life, you know, fo- focusing on getting better. So, uh when I get out there, uh I can put a Put a show on for all you guys. You know, I, I know it's been a wild ride, but stay buckled in, guys. You know, bless her, it's still in full effect, and uh, I can't wait to get out there and do it for you guys again. Are you able to train fully, or are there some restrictions? Have you not trained at all? Uh, we got some restrictions. You know, uh, you know, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing like technique stuff. You know, nothing crazy. Some, some strain and conditioning stuff that's not too strainable uh, on me or whatever. Like, like I said, they, they said that. They don't have a smoking gun of what it is yet, so they want me to take it slow, you know. So we got that 30-day suspension, and they said I can do light stuff, movement stuff, and then uh, that's about it. You know, we're not doing nothing, nothing too crazy. You know, I, I see people. Uh, you post. It, uh, I see people saying uh, this and that, but you know, at the end of the day, I feel great what we're doing. You know, we're going light. We're going. We're easing my way into it, and uh, just can't wait to get back in the octagon. And, and I saw on on social media that you've gone to see some doctors. Could you tell us wh- where you've gone thus far? I think you were in Vegas, correct? Yeah, we were in Vegas. So when I was up in the ER, we, we saw some specialists. Usually saw some specialists. And then uh, when I went to Vegas, I went to a neurological specialist, uh, a doctor, the UFC doctor, Dr. D, uh, recommended. And uh, when, we went to the, when we went to that guy, uh, all the tests uh, was great. You know, he was like, man, he was like, yeah, we like pretty much what I've been saying, you know, he, they don't have a smoking gun. They can't really put their finger on it. But, you know, as of right now, I'm good. So, you know, when you hear those kind of things, it's great, but yet scary, you know. You want to find out what's wrong. You want to know what's wrong. And, uh, you know, it's crazy that we just don't have the answer. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just glad I'm healthy. I'm okay. And, uh, you know, we just wait for the news. Are you awaiting uh, more results at this time? Yeah, we got a couple more tests. I believe we got a couple more tests. I, I got to reach out to uh, to UFC docs and get get some more stuff uh, figured out. But yeah, we got a couple more tests uh, left, and uh, should be great though. Everything looking good. Everything okay. coming back great, and uh, I, I I just I just can't wait. You know, it, it's the greatest news when they call you up and they tell you, look, it's not this, it's not this, it's not this. You know, it's the greatest news. But then in the back of your mind, it's like, then what is it? Right. You know, you know, it, it, it's hard. You know, it's a hard time. It's a hard point right now. And I just got—I felt so bad for the fans. You know, they kept—they kept asking me, "What is the update? What is the update?" You know, I, it, it, it's hard to give an update. You know, I, I wish I had an update. You know, I, I wish I had an update to tell my mom, my dad, my friends, my family, everyone. You know, but and they—that's the update. You know, they said I'm okay, I'm fine right now, and uh, they can't find anything. Wow, that is crazy. I, I can't—I can't imagine. So you're uh, like you said perfectly. You're happy it's not this and that, but still, I'm sure, very frustrated that uh, you still don't know what it is. I'm wondering, yeah. Max, uh, Brian Ortega was offered some opportunities afterwards. He said no. Did you agree with his decision? Look, and, and, and that's the that's the beautiful thing about about uh, about the UFC. You know, everyone's different. You know, that 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 that's Brian Ortega. You know, he he got offered stuff. And he's saying true to himself, you know. At the end of the day, that's why guys like Connor uh, love guys like Connor, you know, like Connor. Connor, when Jose Aldo fought out, Connor went out. He fought for an interim belt because he understands what the interim belt was. He knew the belt was fake, but he understands the money, you know, the pay per view buys that come after the belt and so on and so on, you know. That's why guys like love him, you know, for that risk. That's why guys love uh, Frankie Edgar, you know. Frankie Edgar takes risks all the time, you know. And that's why he love him, but. That's why you got to love UFC, you know, everybody's different, you know, everybody's different, you know, and uh, that's just it, you know, it, Brian Ortega was staying true to himself, I saw a lot of people giving him, uh, giving him some stuff and giving him some praise, but I think that's him, that's the UFC, he's staying true to himself, that's what he want to do, so, you know, you got to respect that, you know, so, it's cool, you know, some, some, uh, you know, like, like I said, like, how Connor and, and uh, Frankie, they're praised for one way, you know, and, you know, or take his praise for one way. You can uh, fair play to him. You know, that's, that's what he wanted to do. That's what him and his team wanted to do. So that's what they did. Obviously, your health is 
by far the most important. But did the UFC tell you they're going to wait for you to come back before doing another title fight? They're, they're not going to do an interim belt, all this stuff. Do you have any idea what their plans are for your division? Uh, you know, I I I, uh, I just saw what uh, everybody probably saw. I saw Dan White say that uh, they're going to wait for me. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's cool, you know. I, I'm trying to get back as soon as possible. I'm trying to get back before uh, the end of the year, you know. I, I know there's the cards in October. Uh, November is MSG. And in December, of course, get the ending of the year card. So we see what happens, you know. We see what happens. They said they'll wait. So I, we see, you know, I, I didn't, uh, we didn't talk fights with them yet. They're still, uh, they're still uh, letting me recover and stuff. So we'll go from there. You know, we, we in, in 30 days, in a month or so, we'll probably start talking to them, and uh, hopefully, we can get something to figure out for this year. Is, is there any part of you that is maybe toying with the idea of going up to 155 just to give your, your body a break? From I know you said it's not weight cut related, but that is some kind of stress that you're putting on your body. Is, is that uh-huh. on the table at all? Uh, you know, we see, you know, like I said before, you know, it's, uh, if they offer me the right opponent, you know, anything is possible. You know, your boy likes to eat. I'm Samoan, 26. I'm still young. I'm still growing. So if the offer comes at 55, then the offer comes, you know, but, uh, like I said, you know, I got a, I got a don't defend and that's what we got to do. You know, it took us forever to, uh, un- unlog, uh, unjam this log jam that unjam the log jam here at 45, you know, at 55, they got their own uh, things cr- crazy at the top there now. So we see what happens. You know, I-, I wouldn't count it out. Anything is possible. You know, if it's 55, it's 55. But I know we got a point in front of us with some unfinished business, you know. I got a couple guys that I want to fight actually at 45, you know. We got Ortega. And then, of course, you know, there's Frankie too. So, you know, and then Aldo just uh, came back. So at the end of the day, we see what happens, you know. Forty-five is looking super intriguing again, and, and I'm excited, you know. And and I think so. Mine and Ortega fight is going to be uh, one of the biggest fights there is, you know, in the UFC. So we see what happens, you know. First things first. I'm gonna care about my health and get ready, focus on that, and uh, whatever UFC wants to do, they can do. You know, I'm just a phone call away. They know that. And just a couple more things for you, Max. And I really appreciate the time. Dana White said on on that Thursday after this came out that maybe water loading or water poisoning was involved. Mm-hmm. Do you know anything about that? Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't know what it is. You know, when we, when we went into the ER, uh, you know, they, they, they checked my, uh, they checked my uh, potassium levels and everything and whatever. And my kidneys and everything was fine. You know, like, the, like, uh, and you guys all know that, uh, at the end of the day, you don't, when you started cutting weight, you don't really water load until the the week of, really, you know. And my symptoms, like I said, started the week before Thursday, you know what I mean, and Friday. So I don't know what it is. You know, I, I that's definitely something that uh, maybe we can look into. But I I I felt fine. You know, I felt fine doing what we was doing. And um, yeah, the water load stuff. You know, every every fighter knows that. You really don't start that to maybe Monday or even Tuesday. So, to that come up, I, I was just like being like uh, kind of blown away. So, there's a lot of things that came out that are uh, kind of questionable. So, it was funny. Okay. Uh, did you see that interview with Michael Bisping where he kind of like asked you how you were feeling? And if so, what's that like for you to, to watch that? Ah, uh, yeah, I saw that video. Yeah, that's a video. Uh, that was the final straw. Uh, for my team to be like, look, we gotta go back to, <laughs> to the doctors, these guys. You know, uh, it was crazy. You know, it was crazy. I felt, I just, you know, that that's how I, that's how I felt from Thursday. You know, that interview I saw. You know, but eyes very open, could barely talk. You know, could barely focus. So it was, it was insane watching. In the time doing it, when I was telling my coaches, I told, I was telling them I was fine. Like I said earlier in the in the interview, I was telling them all the time, trying to fight. That I'm fine. I'm good. Don't worry. And then you know when I finally, you know, a couple of days after whatever things got passed, they finally decided to show me videos of that one. They're showing me videos. They're recording, recording of me, and um, I was like, damn, I didn't know that was happening. <laughs> so it was crazy. It's crazy scene, you know. Are you worried? I ain't worried. I ain't worried at all, man. I ain't worried at all. 
like I said, you know, I'm glad they found nothing, but I hope they do, you know. And and when we find something, you know, that week, I don't wish it on my worst enemy, you know. Hopefully we can find something and we can share with the UFC and um, and we can go from there, you know. So another fight I don't have to go through what I did that week, you know. It was a crazy week for me. So, you know, we're going to continue doing testes, uh, tests and stuff and see some experts still and, um, you know, we'll go from there. Have they told you that they won't let you fight until they find something? Or if they just can't find anything, are you comfortable and UFC comfortable to just allow you to resume? You know, I, I'm comfortable. You know, I'm comfortable. You know, they they uh they ask out the big stuff. You know, they ask out the big stuff that was floating around. You know, like the yeah. stroke and the cushion or whatever. They ask that out. So at the end of the day, I feel comfortable. You know, I feel good. You know, we did a bunch of, a bunch of heart tests too. You know, so so I feel great in that way. And uh, you know, so we see what happens. We see what happens. You know, I feel comfortable, man. I, I'm a fighter, man. I'm a fighter. I want to fight. You can't. Uh, I just can't wait to make that walk again. You know, it, it, it's, uh, it's a, my last fight was in December, man. It's, it's been a while, so I just can't wait to get back in there. What was it like telling your son that you wouldn't be fighting? Man, you know, I. I the, that's the hardest guy to tell, you know. He's he's only in disbelief, you know. I, I can't explain to words, you know. When I had that talk, you know, when I had that talk with him, I told him that I'm not fighting this week. He kind of was like, like, why? What's going on? You know, he had a million. They're at that age where they have a million questions, you know. And it was a hard talk for sure, but uh, you know, the talk ended up with him dancing and uh, you know, and just singing. So. It was a good talk after all, you know. He just uh, he's a love kid. He's a lovable kid, and uh, he's the reason why I do it, you know. You know, I, this uh, that 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 last fight week was uh, over my eyes to a lot of things as, as being a father. So, uh, you know, I think I I really believe things happen for a reason. So, it it was a uh, it was bad, but yet good in this, in in some ways. Let's end on this, Max. I am still trying to figure out. If Drake is referring to you in that song, what is it? Eight out of ten? Is he? Is, is, is the is the six god? Is Drizzy? Is he? Ta it sounds like he's talking about you. Is he talking about you? Hey, hey, I'm gonna hit you guys with the emo. I wish I was on Skype because I'll just hit you guys with the emoji Kanye shrugs. <laughs> well, you never know. Are you? Hey, are you secretly you boys? <laughs> Are you secretly boys with Drake? What? Hey, the world may may never know. I'll tell you this much. There's a lot of things that Drake, that you that people did not know about Drake, so maybe, maybe not. The world may never know. You guys might find out soon. I'll let you guys know soon. Damn. I've never been more jealous of you, my man. That is incredible. It sounds <laughs> like he's giving you a shout out there and I keep listening back to it to get more clues and, and I feel confident in saying he's giving you a shout out, but I'm just not sure. I wanted to know if you had the heads up. Did you know that was coming? Hey, <laughs> I like how you're trying to trick me into saying stuff. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna leave it there. Just emoji. All right. Any shrugs. Fair enough. On our way. Max, this has been a pleasure. It's great to hear that you're in good spirits, that you're in good health, that you're on the road back. Uh, we miss you. Everyone was very concerned, and uh, everyone everyone just wanted to hear from you. So it really means a lot that you'd come on the show. Is there anything that I didn't ask that you want to get out there, or do you feel like we covered it all? No, you covered it all, man. You know, thank you. Thank you again, Ariel, for putting this platform out here for uh, to reach to all my fans. And to all my fans, family, friends, media, everyone that cared, I love you guys all, man. But there is still full effect. We're going to keep the train moving. We're going to figure out and um, get ready. Get ready because it's still just the beginning. Thank you guys again. Love you guys, man. Thank you, Max. Mahalo. Aloha. We'll talk to you soon. All the best to you. All the best. Mahalo, brother. All right, there he is. The reigning defending UFC featherweight champion, Max Holloway, uh, said a lot. Can't thank him and his team enough for coming on the show today. It uh, it means the world to us. So wish him the best, and hopefully he'll return sooner rather than later, and uh, we'll find out that everything is okay with him. All the best to Max Holloway at this time. Uh, we're all we're all pulling for him. All right, uh, let's move along to UFC 227. Uh, one of the big fights, of course. There's two titles on the line. Main event, TJ Dillashaw versus... The one and only Cody Garbrandt. Co-main event, it's Demetrius Johnson looking to extend his streak against the man that he knows, the former gold medalist in the Olympic Games, the one and only Henry Cejudo, the messenger. There he is. Henry, how are you? 
Hey, what's going on, Ariel? Monday of Fight Week, your second uh, crack at the mouse, your second crack at a title. I saw this amazing photo of you, Henry, from that fight. It, I think it was posted by your team. How you looked in, in, in that fight at UFC 197 to how you look now. You are a completely different human being. Your body is absolutely shredded. What has changed? Uh, what has changed is I, I, th I think uh, you would add, uh, you know, kudos to this company, this performance company called NeuroForce. And uh, using a lot of like neural stimming and uh, just just kind of doing things outside the box, uh, you know, altitude capsules, just from, from diet to recovery to strength and conditioning, a lot of that stuff has changed this camp. And uh, as you can see, my huge uh, transformation in my body, and I'm not, I'm clean, I'm clean as a whistle, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we don't, uh, but, we don't uh, doubt you. Strong, you like, strong like bull. Strong yes. like bull, Ariel. Holy smokes, you got an APAC going there. It's unbelievable. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> I thought that they photoshopped your head on my body. <laughs> um, what's the difference Henry between this Henry Cejudo on the Monday before fighting Demetrius Johnson than the one two and a half years ago uh, the difference is, is it's time area that's always been time I think, I, I think now I have the time I've, I've improved I've gotten better I've traveled the world I've you know I've just I've matured man as a fighter as a mixed martial arts like I'm no longer a wrestler that has that has you know that's that's a good striker now. It's like I, I'm I'm more complete now, you know. And it, it's crazy because I'm I'm still growing too as a fighter. But I think I've I you know I I'm officially five years five years into the sport of mixed martial arts. And, you know this is this is as good as uh, this is as good as it gets right here. I'm in my prime. I'm 31 years old, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for a second crack. I'm excited for uh, for a second crack at at, at life. And I want to say congratulations, Ariel. Oh. Thank you. you. Know, first and foremost, for uh, you know our whole ESPN gig that you got, and uh, well deserved, man. Now I'm, I'm getting my second crack now, and I gotta, I, I gotta keep it just like you. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> well, I, I think you're throwing a little bit of shade, as the kids say, Henry. You were mad at me, right? What was going on there? Why were you so mad at me? I wasn't, I wasn't knocking on you. I was talking. It was more about DJ than you, but I think that you felt like I was slighting you. Is that accurate? No, not at, not at all, Aaron. Not at all, man. I just want to... <laughs> the showbiz, man. It's the showbiz. It is showbiz. That's right. And by the way, you, you're an Olympic gold medalist. So that, that's that's the pinnacle. And I respect you know, that, that you feel like this is such a big deal and that you want another crack. I, I would also you know, feel comfortable in saying, and correct me if you feel otherwise, the first title shot came a little too soon, right? In, in hindsight, that wasn't the right time, but you were just almost a product of a very shallow division, right? Yeah, I mean, looking looking back at it now, Ariel, at, at the time I didn't see it like that just because it was just just based on my ability. But mixed martial arts is much more than just ability. It's much more than just being fast and strong and being able to to endure. It's there. There's 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 more to that, and and I found that out quickly in UFC one. And uh, you know, like I said, I I I you know I I got rid of a lot of people in my camp. Uh, you know, to you know, soon right after the fight, I mean, there's there's change that had to be made, and I made those changes, and I traveled the world, and I think the I think the improvements of my uh, of my fight so far have kind of traded to the world that, you know, um, I, I have a shot at being Demetrius Johnson. You didn't have a lot of time in the cage with him, but there's obviously a lot of tape out on him. Do you almost mm -hmm. feel like there's an advantage in your favor there because everyone, you know, Demetrius continues, you know, he, he's so innovative. Just look at what he did to Ray Borg. But as far as like what you did with him in the actual cage, not a lot of film. And I would argue that you're a much different fighter than you were back then. At this point, we know who Demetrius is as great as he is. And, 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 and as tough as the puzzle, you know, he's fought so many times, but I feel like you've evolved a hell of a lot since there. And you didn't show him too much in your fight. Am I making sense? Like all, almost, is that to your advantage? You are, you are, and, not, and that's the and that's the edge, and that's the way we're looking at it, Ariel. It's like, I can't look at it as like only lasted twenty, you know, uh, two minutes and thirty six seconds. I'm looking at more of the fact that hey, man, he really didn't get a chance to take a bite out of me either. I mean, he, I got knee to the body, and that was that gray area. That was that was that was ultimately how he beat me. It was it was to the body, and now you go back and I look at it, I just like, well, we, we got better the clinch. We uh, you know, we we we, we practiced getting hit to the body and. And, and and now it's I, I don't feel like I demonstrated I, I demonstrated a little bit of my style with Wilson, but I even held back a little get a little bit against Sergio Perez because I knew 
I knew there's so much more that Henry Cejudo could give, and and now with Demetrius, he, he now he's got to think too. It's not just it's not just me. I I, I I've watched all of Demetrius' fight. I, I picked up habits from Demetrius. You know, I picked up good things, and I and I've also seen some of his flaws. And uh, you know, I've just it's, it's just keeping it's just being positive with with pretty much with the with the around with the half around that I had. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, so you say that you've seen all his fights. When has he looked the most vulnerable, in your opinion? Who has been able to expose him? You know, in this in this incredible run, is there is there one fight, one performance that you look at and you say, okay, if I could capitalize on this, I will be in a good spot. Ah, oh, man, you would have to go way far back, and I really don't want to give the game plan to you okay. by any means. But I know there was a couple a couple people that kind of gave Demetrius problems, and that was one Ian McCall, and then two it was. Uh, it was John Dotson, you know, but but a lot of those guys they did lose, and I feel like if I could make a lot of those adjustments that 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 they should have done, that it it, it could be a, you know, it, it, I, I I could win this fight. Hmm. By the way, this this painting in back of you is phenomenal. I can't stop looking at it. Is that your family there? It is. It is. This is back in. Uh, this is back when we were in South Central LA. Wow. I got it done, I got it done in Brazil. There, me and my six. Uh, me and my six siblings. There's a bunch of us, man. Where are you? <laughs> Where are you there? Are you on on your mom's lap over there? No, no, no. I'm actually on my sister's lap. I'm, I'm not. I'm that blonde little kid. Oh, okay. Believe, wow. Be, be, believe it or not, or you always that blonde little kid on my sister's that lap. That is that's beautiful. That's my brother Angel, Gloria, George, Alonzo, and my mother Nelly. Wow. <laughs> and, and that's in South Central. How long were you in South Central for? Um, I was there for five years. So from from age. Since I was born till I was five, and then we moved out to, uh, you know, we just moved out to Phoenix, to New Mexico, and then Phoenix. I feel like you, um, you're, you're so closely linked to the Phoenix, Arizona area. A lot of people don't know about your ties to Los Angeles. This is incredible. You're going back to your birthplace to potentially win the belt. That's insane. We are, we are, and I remember, I remember the Staples Center. You know, we'd, we'd, uh, we'd always stop by it. On, 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 my mom would go on the way to work, and we, I think we only, we, I think we only lived about. Maybe about ten minutes away from the Staples Center, so it's uh, it's a place that's very not just the city of Los Angeles, but the Staples Center because it's the place where De La Hoya and some of the greatest uh, fighters have fought at. And uh, now I'm I'm looking forward to making history, Ariel, more than anything, in uh, in my birthplace and uh, you know beating the pound for pound best fighter in the world. That's what I, that's what's on my mind right now. To be the first guy to beat DJ. Um... As, as a flyweight, to be the guy to dethrone him and, and stop this record-breaking streak. This puts you, like, you win, look, look at Matt Serra. He beat GSP once, didn't have to do a thing after he's a Hall of Famer. You do this, you go down as one of the all-time greats, gold medal. I mean, this is incredible. <laughs> right? Right? You feel me? I like it. I like it. You're a good hype man, man. Come I on, like Henry. You, uh, Olympic gold medals and USC gold, man. There's... It's never been done in history. I'm looking, to, I'm looking to become the first. This is obviously a question that would be best to ask you after, but since you're here, let me ask you, what do you think would feel better, being the first guy to beat DJ or winning that Olympic gold? Um, God, Lee, it's just... That's, you can ask me that, but a lot of people ask me, is it, is it, is it winning the belt the greatest thing? Is, is it winning the belt? I, I'm not sure, but I, I know beating Dimitris... It's, it's not about the UFC belt no more, Eric. It's uh, it's about beating Demetrius Johnson, man. It's about beating, the, you know, the equivalent of, of of Anderson Silva when he lost to Chris Weidman. Like it's 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 beat it's beating that caliber of, of of athlete, you know. So that of its own. So it's not even the UFC belt. It's Demetrius Johnson. You know, it, it, it's beating him that I think is going to be something special. Like anybody, I mean, there's a bunch of tough UFC guys, but there's only one Demetrius Johnson. There's only one pound for pound the best fighter in the world, and that's him. Hmm. Well, it's not even the belt no more. It's not even about the belt no more. It's about beating DJ Johnson. Wow. So DJ, in your mind, is bigger than the belt. It is. It wow. Is. And I think uh, I think a a, a a a true a true champion or somebody that's that's right rightfully in their mind as a true competitor would see it that way. Uh, do you feel like he gets the same kind of respect from the rest of the MMA community? Is he appreciated in your opinion? Not like he should. I think Demetrius Johnson is. Uh, is 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 that and some and and, and that's what and that's what drives me earlier that's what drives, it drives me because I, I can i can pull him off that, that you know i can literally yank him out you know and, and i think and i think that's what and i think ultimately that's the motivation but i feel like he should be a little more respectful 
you know, and, and I love Daniel Cormier with, with all my heart, man. But I still feel like Demetrius Johnson is still the number one ranked pound for pound. A lot of people that are in the MMA community that understand MMA would probably agree, and maybe even Daniel would probably. Agree. Wow, that's your Olympic teammate, DC. And, but that, but that's that's the type of monster that I'm going up against. Man. Yeah. And I respect that you don't fake it till you make it. You face it until you make it. Oh. And when you face it, things will become a lot easier. Do you think he has the same kind of respect for you? Um. I don't know. I don't know if he does or not. I don't know if he does or not. I, I think maybe the first time. I think the second time he's a little bit different. What, in what way? Oh, um, look at this guy. I don't know. I, I, it seems like a lot of the interviews that he's done, he's been over, uh, you know, he's going to hurt me again. It just, just just, hearing from what came out of his mouth, it's just, uh, who knows? Who knows? But, I just, you know, ultimately, I hope he's ready, man, because I, I don't want to fight a hurt Demetri Johnson. I want, I want the best of the best, and I believe the best of the best is going to come out. And it's also going to come out in me, area. So what are you saying? You, you you feel like he's overlooking you or disrespecting you? What are you seeing in these interviews? I'm not sure. Um, he, I, it, it almost sounds like, okay, I'm, we're going to defend it again, and that's it. But it, I don't – I wouldn't – I mean, if he sees it like that, then he's going to have a long night. He's going to have a long night. When I, the first time I fought him, I was three years into the game. Hmm. Three years, Ariel, uh, 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 barely a year into the UFC. You know, I, I think they had said in UFC Canada, it's like when Demetrius Johnson held the belt, I was I hadn't even made my MMA debut yet. Mm, that's crazy. <laughs> so you feel? You know? Do you feel like he's not as motivated to fight you because he's been there, done that in his mind? No, I, I personally, I think he is. I just don't know his thought process. Okay. You no, know, I, I think his thought process might be a little different. I think it may be. Uh, I, th I think it might be a little more technical on his side rather than, hey, it's going to be a fight, man. It's going to be a fight. I'm bringing a fight. Wow. Um, and so when do you go to Los Angeles? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. That's tomorrow. What's Eric telling you? Is he try trying to tell you something over there? You're, that's a real hype, man. <laughs> Hold on. Let's, uh, let's, let's call him right now, Eric. Captain Eric. Captain Eric, the brains behind so many uh, different fighters and their 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 rise. Over here, man. Ariel wants to say what's up to you. The man, the myth, the legend, Ariel. Hi, buddy. <laughs> what is he ducking Hurry us? Up, man. We're on air, bro. We're yeah. Back. What do you two think minutes. this is? Gee, two minutes. Gosh, you think I got two minutes? We got a, a jam-packed <laughs> show here, man. Yeah, this is on. This is on his own. This is on his own time, man. He uh. He's and he's never he was actually a little late to his interview, but he's he's got something for you, Ariel. Oh Hold he on. does. He's, oh he's got something for me. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> We're on video. Are we on video? Yeah. yeah. You can't you well, can't you, see what you get. Oh look at this. What he's all dressed up now all of a sudden? You got look at oh wow. Look at that. What is that? Snake skin? <laughs> look at you. It's no, but what I'm what I'm doing is I got some sp something special for Henry. Okay. His celebration. Wow. Whoa. Reebok certified. For real? Reebok, real gold. You're giving this to him? Eight and a half. Wow. <laughs> Henry, you're getting these for the first time? You didn't know this was coming? Uh, I had no idea. He's surprising me. That's not necessarily my style, but That's we're not... rocking with the gold. <laughs> All we see is gold. Wow, that is something. We're going to see who's gold, who's real gold, and who's gold plated. I, I feel you, my man. Look at that. You're going to be, when we see you at Media Day, you have to be wearing those. I'll be very disappointed if you're not, Henry. Got it. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna put me under pressure. I think I might, I think I might have to. Are, you? You Are they your size? Have... You could say they. You could say they're not your size, and you'll and this whole nightmare will be over. Don't worry. <laughs> Seriously, man, you'll freaking cut somebody with these. Get a, I'm gonna get into a rumble with Khabib with these, man. Yeah. Somebody will get cut. <laughs> Holy smokes, that is really pointy. Well, thank you. I mean, I I feel like you're not very happy with the gift. You didn't even say thank you to Eric. No, thank you, thank you, Captain. <laughs> I think I think it's more of a gift for me. I think after I use it, you gonna take them. <laughs> take them back. Let's get him on the spot right now, Eric. Prediction. Yo. Who wins? How on Saturday? Let's hear it. Oh, you know, uh, I think Henry's got to win three rounds out of five. But lately, he's been knocking out all of his opponents and hurting all his sparring partners. So don't be surprised to see uh, another knockout by Henry Cejudo. The Astark Warrior will come alive come August 4th. The, the last fight that happened is not the fight we're going to have. That's behind us. The fight we're going to have is in front of us. There's a million reasons 
to put the pressure on Demetrius Johnson. And Henry's coming to take it. Henry's coming. Everything's there for the taking. The belt, the flyweight world championship, the gold, the legacy, the castle. We're going to take it. All right. Look at that. Wow. You motivated her. Yes. Let's ah! go. August 4th. Let's do it. <laughs> Henry, Eric, I wish you guys the best. Safe travels to Los Angeles. This is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Henry Cejudo versus Demetrius Johnson. I appreciate you squeezing us in, Henry, as you prepare to leave for Los Angeles. I'm looking forward to seeing you out there and seeing the fight. Thank you so much. No, absolutely. Thank, thank you, too, man. Thank you for being so authentic with everything, man. Thank you for being the voice of MMA. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to you there. All right, Henry. All, All the right. best to you, my man. There he thank is, you. Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. The Messenger. What a great opportunity for him on Saturday night, Staples Center, Los Angeles, he is getting another crack at one Demetrius Johnson. Unbelievable. Demetrius Johnson, the winningest champion in UFC history, looking to defend that title one more time and looking to do so against the man he defeated at UFC 197. You got to love Henry Cejudo. And that, by the way, was his uh, head coach and uh, the head coach for not only him, but Many other fighters, Paulo Costa, the uh, Pitbull brothers. He has worked with Leona Machida, the great Eric Albaracin. And so they are off. I didn't know. I, I may have known this, but I didn't know that he was from South Central. I didn't know he was actually born in South Central Los Angeles. That's pretty interesting. And now he's fighting at the Staples Center. And very interesting to hear him talk about how the, 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 the belt doesn't mean as much as actually beating Demetrius Johnson. That tells you how respected Demetrius Johnson is by his peers. All right. One of the big stories last week, of course, we talked about it a little bit. Kamaru Usman is coming up to talk about it, but let me tell you what that story is. Of course, uh, Colby Covington not fighting Tyron Woodley. They are not unifying those belts. And once they actually do fight, as Dana White told our own Brett Okamoto, uh, and, and they being Darren Till and Tyron Woodley, Colby Covington will not be the interim champion anymore. He is going to be stripped. And so I started to think, okay, that's interesting. September 8th, UFC 228, it's going to be Tyron Woodley, it's going to be Darren Till, and, and Colby is no longer in the picture. What does Kamaru Usman think about this? Because you can make a very strong case that he should have been the one to get that title shot if it was not going to be. Colby Covington. So let us talk to the Nigerian nightmare himself. There he is, Kamaru Usman, standing by in his car. Hey, Kamaru, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing, today, Ariel? I'm doing great. I appreciate you doing this. By the way, is that a, is that a car seat in the back there? Is that for a child? Yes, it is. She's actually back here. We're um, we're waiting right now for um, it's gymnastics. Oh, so, damn. Yeah. It oh, was her she. birthday yesterday. We were at Disney and we came back today. So it's, uh, you know, we're trying to get back in the routine. And uh, you know, we chose to take time out to do the show. Wow. Okay. Go in here into gymnastics. Man, but, I, uh, I feel horrible. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for taking you away, but I, I want to wish your daughter a happy birthday. Uh, thank you. Hey, baby. He said happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, yeah, wow. Thank you. Um, okay, so we have a lot to talk uh, about, and I won't take up too much of your time. What was your reaction, Kamaru, when you heard that they were going with Darren Till and not Colby Covington against Tyron Woodley on September 8th? Yeah, I mean, um, it, it's initially it was kind of hard to take, but I understand it. You know, the more I, I got, the more I, I get into the sport, the more I start to understand the different components and the dynamics uh, of it, and, and of not just myself, me being, wanting to be a champion, but also pro at, on the promotional aspect of it. Because let's, you know, let's be real. Uh, you know, you just have two guys that are kind of in the same place, but um, one of the guys just happens to be from a region that the UFC is really pushing and, and are making waves in. They're, they're really trying to break into that market. They, they need that next superstar. They need that guy. So you you have a guy in Darren Till. So, yeah, they, they definitely chose to, to go with him. Obviously, it makes more sense. Him being a champion, that's more eyes from that region and, and more money from them. But, um, you know, yeah, for me personally, I felt that I should have deserved the shot. Because I, I, I've proved my proven myself. I, I've gone in and fought everybody they put in front of me. I've dominated them from start to finish, and, and you know I, I felt that I deserved the shot. But I understand why they went with Darren Till, and 
it's not Darren Till's fault. A lot of guys, I see a lot of the comments, a lot of people kind of trying to down him and, and, and talk about you don't deserve this or that. It's not his fault. The UFC offered him the shot. Of course he's going to take it. Why would he, he would say no to a title shot? Yeah. Absolutely not. So, you know, it's not his fault. It is what it is. I, I'm just, I'm sitting here like I've, all, I've been doing the last two and a half years. I'm sitting and waiting for my shot. Okay, so it seemed like you and Darren Till were on some kind of collision course when we thought that Colby was fighting Tyron. What does this mean for you? Yeah, uh, um, I, I felt that that was the next fight. I mean, a, a, everybody in the world knows that. You know, we are the only guys right now really in that title uh, picture. It's us, it's us three. It's me, Till, and uh, Covington. But um, so I, I felt that that was the fight, me and him, on the same card as Woodley and Covington. But, you know, Covington uh, couldn't couldn't put it together at the right time. So, you know, they had to pick one, and they went with that guy. So. Were you ever in consideration, to the best of your knowledge? The what? Were you ever in consideration for this opportunity against Woodley, to the best of your knowledge? Um, I, I, I think so. Um, I... I you know, my manager doesn't like to really play into a lot of things unless we, we feel like it's, it's you know, it, it's solid. It's solid intel, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's almost a for sure thing. But I I was in Vegas. We were in Vegas together, me and Till, the, the weekend to kind of – we heard things were starting to fall apart with uh, the plans. And uh, I, I thought they would offer – give me the call first but i i heard that they they gave him the call and and uh, offered him the fight so you know uh more more power to him but you know me and him while we were in vegas we talked about it that's a fight that has to happen and we, we we both uh we're on this course we know it we both want to fight and he's game he's willing to fight me i'm willing to fight him so it's uh as competitors that's a fight that absolutely has to happen uh, you mentioned being in Vegas. Last time I talked to you, you were on your way to meeting uh, Dana White in Vegas. It sounds like you have a new contract. Have you signed the contract? Is that a done deal? Uh, we have, we've worked some things out. Um, we we have. we worked some things out. Like I said, um, that's one of the, the perks of having a, a, a great manager, and that's him being able to bridge that gap between me as a fighter and the promoter. And, you know, that's what he did. He, he put us together to be able to talk and air out our differences, and we did. And and right now, things are things are looking good. So it, it's all about that next opponent, which I have been offered a next opponent. Oh. But we'll, we'll see how that, that, fall, that falls into play. Wait a second. Who have you been offered? Well, uh, obviously, Covington was the guy that they wanted for that title shot. You, you, you know, it was a story there. Yeah. He built that story. And, and that was the fight that they wanted. But unfortunately, he wasn't able to step up. And so, which is why there's a lot of blowback from this right now. Yeah. You, 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 you're, you're one of those guys that you've put yourself in that situation. You've talked all that talk. You, 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 you've caused all this commotion. And now when you're being offered the shot, you're saying, no, I want to take some time. It doesn't really work like that. And that's why no one has any sympathy for him based on that. So when you get that call, it's time for you to be up. If you're going to talk to talk, you got to be ready to back it up. And, and unfortunately, he wasn't ready, so they moved on to Till. He said he wants to wait until November. They've offered me the fight with him in November, big fight, November 30th. So he has plenty of time to be back in shape and ready. That's the fight. Wow. That's the. Let's be honest. It's the biggest fight in the welterweight division besides Till fighting yeah. for the title or him fighting uh, Woodley. It's the absolute biggest fight. It's the fight everybody wants to see. And now it's been offered again. When he's ready, I chose to wait because I had another offer maybe in uh, October, September. And I chose to and I chose to wait. I'm going to wait for Covington. Wow. Okay. There's a lot to digest here. Now, just to be clear, you said November 30th. Did you mean November 3rd? November 30th. 30th. Oh, where's that? In November, I mean, not nothing, nothing, nothing set in stone. But in November, I've been offered a fight with him because he said he won't be ready till November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got to cater to him. Okay. I have no problem catering to him. I have no problem waiting to hand him the beating. So it doesn't matter. He wants to do it in November. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna wait for him to November. Wow. And you've already turned down a title fight, 
And now they're giving you the, the, the fight to see if you have the next shot. If you're going to turn that down too, then I'm next in line. So, you know, it is what it is. The fight has been offered, and I have accepted the fight. Okay. So, do you know if he has? Now it's up to the UFC to make it happen. Do you know if he's accepted it? What? Do you know if he has accepted it? Let's be honest. I, I doubt he has. I okay. doubt he will. I'm the guy that he will run from if he can forever. So we'll, 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 let's see how this thing plays out. But let's just, I'm going to be on. I'm going to let you know right now. I've been offered that fight. I have accepted that fight. I, said I will wait for him. So we'll see how that plays out. If the fight doesn't happen, you know on which end it is. Um, the other fight that you were offered, was that RDA? Was that the original fight? <laughs> Can't tell you that. <laughs> All right, fair enough. You told me You told me the better I was, stuff. Anyway. I was offered somebody up there. This is the thing, Ariel. I want to climb. I, 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 it's time for me to get to that title. I've worked so hard for it, and the, it, it's kind of pointless for me to be fighting guys that it's basically a lateral movement. Yeah. So I've offered a fight to be able to move up in the division and po potentially fight for that title next. And that's all I'm looking for. And the only guys, we all know the only guys that are available and are ready. You know, it's definitely somebody above me. And it was somebody above me. But well, this is I bigger. I wait for something because that's the fight that everybody wants. So that's the fight that I want. And do you feel like the UFC has your back now? Do you feel like you're in, in their good graces that all, all the, the bad air has been cleared? I mean, as far as me and Dana, I yeah, just, yeah I, I think that me and Dana are, are you know, we're kind of on the same page. We understand each other. But, it, it, you know, I can't say, oh, the UFC are, are, are back or the UFC is behind me. I can't say that because if they're behind me, then I get any fight I want when I want. And, and that's, you know, right. that would be my, my take on it. But, unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the, the case here. I want to fight for that title. If the UFC was behind me, I would be fighting for that title because I deserve that title. So, or that title shot. So, we'll, we'll, we'll see, man. You know, I don't know. How, how do you, how do you feel about Till getting a title shot after missing weight? I, uh, you know what? I, I'm not. I'm not really. I don't really. I don't, I'm not playing that much into it. You know, I mean, he's not the first guy to miss weight. And that's not his first time missing weight. Everyone is just saying, oh, he missed weight his last fight. That's not his first time he missed weight. He's missed weight before. So it, it's we, we can't just we can't just condemn the guy. Oh, he, he missed weight. He shouldn't get a title shot. You know, he, he based on the rankings that I really don't take much precedent in. He's ranked number number one or number two. He's ranked number two. So he beat Wonder Boy. So he's next in line. <laughs> but there's no pun. It's crazy. You 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 can get punished for missing weight. You don't get a bonus, a fight night bonus, but you get a title shot. You're still in the running for that. Hey, um, Ariel. I, uh, between you and me, you're not gonna get a, any complaints. Whether who who deserves that title shot, I I think I definitely deserve it. But you know, it was offered to Till, and, and more power to him for accepting. Why would he turn that down? It's not his fault they offered it to him. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I think it was. A, uh, I think it was promotional aspect is what they wanted to do is where they felt they they needed to go, and so that's why they went with him. So you know, nothing I could do about that, but accept it. Let me ask you this before I let you go. And again, thank you so much for doing this. Um, you tweeted something about the fight on Saturday, the main event. Mark Goddard responded to you. I think you may have taken the tweet down. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, I, I took the tweet down. I mean, it's I, I left it up. It, I left it up overnight. The thing about it was, obviously, I, I'm one. I pride myself on not really reacting on emotions, but there's there's a handful of guys in this business in the, in this sport. That, that I I care enough about that I'm just invested in so much that that really evoke emotions out of me and, and Eddie has happens to be one of those guys Eddie's like a brother to me that that's family and so I get emotional during certain things I'm only human as well and so uh you know watching the fight I first of all that that is probably one of the most stupid rules in mixed martial arts. Because it's, I, I, I get it. You know, they said, oh, don't throw a 12 to 6 elbow to someone's head, skull, whatever. I, I get that. But he threw it to the shoulder. Or not even, it's right right on the neck. And it, I mean, it was, 
it was just Eddie had him in a compromising position. For me, what it looked like is that, you know, Poirier was starting to break. Eddie was taking him down. I, I start, started to see him take deep, deep breaths. And I felt like that that was a big turning point in the fight. Mark Goddard didn't really, I don't feel like he went over and, and warned him, Eddie, don't throw a 12 to 6 elbow. No, it just, boom, like, let's stand up right away. And, you know, that's all it took. That small moment. Is what was all it took for Eddie to kind of get discombobulated and wasn't really, you know, back in there. And and more power to Dustin Poirier, man. He took advantage of the opportunity. He let off a crazy combination, uh, uh, put Eddie in a compromising position and was able to get the finish. So, you know, it's not I, – I apologize to Poirier if, if it had any – you know, any blowback towards him, whether people are saying anything about him. No, he did his job. He went out there and he got the finish. So, so more power to him, man. A tough guy. You know, I respect him a lot. But, you know, it was just based on emotion. I, I, I tweeted that out. And unfortunately, you know, it, it, it was – I was overreacting, obviously. But, um, you know, I left the tweet up for a while because it was just how I felt. I'm a human being. Yeah. I stated how I felt mm-hmm. at the time. But then I, Mark Goddard, you know, responded. And, of course, I responded to him after about 20 minutes. I pulled off. And, obviously, it wasn't his fault. And then, um, you know, I started to – the next day, I kind of, you know, I kind of started to see some of how the fans were taking it. Some fans were, were making some comments, not just towards me, but then I started to see the comments they were making towards Mark. And I was then, and I was then, I took the tweet down. They, you know, I didn't put the tweet up there so fans could and, and talk, trash and talk about him you know but uh but uh um you know i started to see that and that's why i, I took it down but are you good you know, now though? That, but, like will you will you will you ask not to 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 have him ref you anymore no obviously yeah like i said i was overreacting oh, okay okay okay, okay. but this is the thing with me is i don't really i don't care about a ref i don't care about the referee i don't I don't even think that there's a referee until he comes in the dressing room when it's fight time. So I don't really care. I, I, I don't go into a fight thinking, oh, hopefully I get this referee that can do this and this for me. I don't care about that. When I train for a fight, I train to go out there and dominate a fight from start to finish. The referee shouldn't play a part in, in, in me fighting. So, you know, yeah, um, you know, um, you know, I absolutely want to apologize to Mark if that had any negative effect on him because I started to see some of the comments. And it, you know, it was stupid on my part. You know, I was reacting off of emotions. I am a human being as well. Yep. But um, yeah, it doesn't. You know, I, I don't really care who was refing my fight. I don't care. I go out there and I do my job. You're a class act, my man. Okay, so November thirtieth, Colby Covington. It's on. It has been offered. It has been accepted. By the way, I looked at my calendar. November 30th is a Friday. Are you sure that's the date? Oh, what's up? Okay. All right. You've said enough. Your daughter is an angel for for being so patient. So thank you uh, to both of you. Enjoy gymnastics class. Thank you so much, as always, for the time tomorrow. Thank you, Ariel. I appreciate the time. All right. We'll talk to you soon. There he is, the Nigerian nightmare himself and his daughter are standing by. And uh, so nice uh, to have her wait. Um, ah, the tough finale. Thank you, Jake. That's right. Crack staff, tough finale, Las Vegas. Yes, now it makes sense. <laughs>